We're recording this show on Valentine's Day. Now, at least in this country, the main tradition isn't the giving of gifts and chocolates and flowers. No, it's the decrying of our devotion to a holiday completely fabricated by the modern-day greeting card industry. Yeah, too bad that's completely false. Valentine's Day is old. The classic line, be my Valentine, that was written in Hamlet. Pretty sure that predates Hallmark. So, I wrote a little poem to commemorate the day. Roses are red, violets are blue, and I am Evo Terra. And this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout, this time with sound. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and today our topic is living the digital freelance writer lifestyle. Is it as lucrative, as fascinating, as drop-dead sexy? as you might imagine. To answer these questions, our guest is C.C. Chapman, a best-selling author, keynote speaker, and entrepreneur. C.C., please introduce yourself and tell us what you are drinking. Uh, hey, everybody. It's C.C. Chapman. I am drinking a Kona Brewing Company Big Wave Golden Ale. It's a little too fruity for my taste, but I'm dealing with it because it's snowy outside, so I'm drinking summer beer. Very nice. Well, this evening I am drinking a uh, Hop Slam, which is something that I have consumed before on here, but I have a lot of them, so I'm going to keep at it. Eva, what you got cooking over there? Wrapping up the last of the palate wrecker, my two <laughs> cases of the palate wrecker. This is my last bottle of the palate wrecker. Oh, wow. I'm going to nominate that for the unnecessary moment of the uh, hangout right <sighs> there. Oh. I don't know whether I should be turned on or grossed out. On, baby. You can yeah, both. baby. You can do both. All right, so let's hop into this uh, here now that we've got hopefully most of the silliness out of the way. So, uh, Cece, you have two successful books, both with uh, traditional publishers. Now, how did that work? They uh, did all the work, and you just sat back and collected the bad stacks of cash and royalties. Oh, yeah, they send me around the world and all that stuff. No, I mean, in both situations, yeah, both of my books have been published with Wiley. Uh, they, in both situations, I got a, a small advance. And uh, thankfully, in both situations, I do get royalty checks, which is not a given, which means I've sold enough to earn back the advance. And, it, it, you know, it's, I love them. They've been very good to me. I, you know, I don't want to bad mouth them, but at the same time, you know, people are like, like last week I was in Detroit doing my first book tour stop and people are like, why aren't you coming to Ohio or why aren't you coming there? And I'm like, bring me. That's the only way I get to go somewhere. This all comes out of my pocket or what I usually push it off is I do this thing. You know, you buy a set number of books, you cover my airplane ticket in my hotel. I'll go anywhere in the world. And that worked really good. Last book tour. I'm doing it again this time, but it's one of those things where the publisher Unless you're selling millions of dollars for them, they are not going to cover a book tour. So it's out of my pocket. It's a lot of work, and you know, you've know you got to pimp just as hard as if you self-published it, if not harder. You know, I, th I think that's a, a fallacy, CC, that a lot of um, wannabe authors uh, have out there is that they're going to get this fat advance. Uh, so, so A, there's a problem. Uh, and B, that, that they're taken care of. You know, the reality is it probably took you, I'm just going to guess and, and say anywhere from three to six months to write Amazing Things Will Happen, at yep. least that uh, that amount. Yep. Um, so, you know, you, you were a successful businessman for, for a long time. You know, you've, you've got a family. You can raise all them. Did the advance that they gave you cover what you would consider a good working wage for those six months? No. <laughs> no, not not at all. I mean – not at all. And, <laughs> and it's, you know, that's pretty standard for a first time author. I mean, I know I actually, I actually got a better advance than some people have that I know, but I mean, it's, yeah, no, if I had taken and taken us, you know, and, and done my consulting, you know, for six months, sure. it would not, I would make much, 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 much more money uh, consulting than I would have for the advance. So now, obviously, you you do a lot more. You, you brought up the consulting. You you are not just making your money writing books. You no. you have to have <laughs> other other means of income, right? Yeah. No. I wish. I wish. I would love to make a living fully off of just writing, but the reality is that's very impossible to do until you have 
a large collection of books and they're selling on a regular basis. And even then it's hard. Depends on totally depends on what kind of living you want. I could not live the way I want to live on books alone, although I would love to. Um, I get paid to speak. I get paid to consult. I do um, freelance writing, freelance content creation. So no, I'm hustling nonstop. It's not like the book magically, you know, took care of all my woes. I wish it did. I mean, I love, I love it. And yeah, don't get me wrong. I mean, having a book, whether it's, you know, any writing a book is the best business card you could ever have. If it's a good book, you know, let's face it. It's going to be a good book first and foremost. Is that the main reason that you, you write? Cause I have to confess the first couple of minutes here, you probably killed the career of like 30 authors who were just like, Oh, forget this. I'm out. You know, is, is it the that business card that lead? Is it for the, the love of it? What drives you? It's a little bit of both. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, so content rules when I wrote it was strictly, that was a business. It was one of those things where I knew, I knew the topic. I knew I could do it. I knew it'd be good for my career. On the flip side, amazing things will happen. I wrote it because I had to. It was in my head. I mean, I know writers and authors can relate to this. I just had to get it out. I had to write it. And I was going to self-publish. I had every intent of self-publishing it because I figured Wiley wasn't going to go for it. I didn't want to shop it around. I just wanted to get the idea out there. And then my editor got wind that I was working on this new book. And she's like, tell me, what are you doing? And it just kind of went from there. But no, I mean, I wrote it because I really, really wanted to. And I knew going in that it wasn't going to make me millions of dollars, you know, but at the same time, I, it's a real honor to get it out and get it on shelves and have people react to it. And you know, it's only been out a few months now and it's doing, it's doing, it's doing better than I dreamed of. So I can't argue with it. But yeah, don't get your dreams crushed. I mean, just make sure you realize that it's not, <laughs> it's not an easy path unless you, unless you get really lucky and you write, you know, fictions where the money really pays. I mean, let's face it, if you're going to make money writing, you know, fiction, if you do really, really well, you got to be lucky. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to write the next mommy porn book, although I wish I could. That'd be great. But that would have some perks. That's I know great. Evo's working. I'm sure Evo's working on some mommy porn. Yeah, but so, they're not going to do book so, form. So, so the sequel isn't amazing things will happen to uh, soccer moms? That's not where you're going for volume two? <laughs> Uh, I actually had someone say, Cece, you should write like amazing things will happen for romance and amazing things will happen in work. And I kind of went, like, I'm still like, that's, ha it's either, it, that's either genius or insanity. I haven't figured out which. Hey, let's talk about work for a second. You used, I, to, have, you used to have a day job. You used to sit behind the desk and used to work. And, and now you don't have to do any of that. You just fart off all day. And yeah, I sit here in my office all day and do nothing, yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, you're probably working every bit as hard, if not even harder now. Talk to us a little bit about that transition from wage slave to uh, pay me because I'm CC Chapman. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't – I was actually working – my last traditional job was for a college. I was working uh, at a business school running their digital marketing department, and just decided that it wasn't right for me. I just needed to be, I needed, I needed to be someplace that would challenge me more. And so I left to go work for a startup and, you know, crazy and then started my own agency. And it's a lot of, I got, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you want the easy road, punch a clock nine to five. It, granted, it, I'm not taking, I'm not saying what I do is harder than, you know, physical labor. Don't get me wrong. There are people digging ditches and working the factory line. And those people are blue collar, hard working dudes and dudettes. But you know what? If you want the easy path, it is punching a clock nine to five. Cause I don't know where the next paycheck's coming. I got to hustle and work. And yeah, sometimes it seems like I am just screwing off on the internet. Oh, daddy's on Twitter again, you know, but daddy's <laughs> working too, as well as playing. It's kind of those lines get to get blurred between playing and uh, working, which is kind of fun. You've got two kids. Do you want them to do what you're doing, or do you want them to go, you know, be the next president or or get a job somewhere? What do you want? I want them to do whatever it is they want to do. I mean, honestly, I mean, I look at my son who's just turned fourteen. Jeez. He's got that. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. He's got that. He's got that logical, like, engineering mind going on. I mean, he uh, just the other day we were, he said he wanted to either invent the he wanted to either make video games or invent the next predator drone. And I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> But then my daughter's a little creative ball. I mean, she's, you know, she does fashion. She does, She's a little me. She's pretty funny. She's all creative. And I, we've always told them, you know, whatever it is you want to do. But, like, she just discovered science. She's really getting into that. So I have no idea what these kids are going to do. But honestly, as long as they're happy 
and they, you know, as long as they get the right work ethic, which is my dad put in my head, you know, you've got to work really hard at whatever it is you want to do. And they don't understand what I, my parents don't get what I do on a day to day basis, but they see I'm happy and the kids are happy. My wife isn't killing me yet. So I guess they allow it to happen. You know, when you were ranting at the beginning, you actually reminded me of a friend of mine who quit the day job to become an indie musician. Like, yeah. I've got the music in me. I want to do this. You know, it's a lot harder to pay all the bills, but I just can't stop myself. This is what I got to do, man. So. It's tough. In the, and I, what, I always, what I always worry about with creative people is the starving artist mentality. The star, being a star, starting artist, that's that. I, this is the first sip of beer I've had with the hell. Uh, the starving <laughs> artist you know, that's sexy and fun maybe when you're 18 or 19, but when you get kids and a wife and a mortgage, you can't. You have obligations. So it's it's 10 times scarier and a million times harder, you know, once you have responsibilities. You, yeah, you got to go from starving artist to at least contributing some funds to the family pool artist. <laughs> yes. right? Yeah, you have to. I mean, God bless, God bless my wife that, you know, she has a stable job. She does, she doesn't punch a clock, but she's, you know, she's a stable job and benefits, thank the, you know, for benefits. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah. yeah, I couldn't do it without her. Very cool. Well, you are, you are painting an amazingly rosy picture. I am ready to quit and go full-time freelance based on this wonderful, you know, uh, <laughs> w you know, Narnia world that you're painting for me here. Wait a minute. So you already, you already did that. Oh, I'm sorry. We were. Yeah, it's we're working out about as well. It's working out yeah, about yeah, as well. Broken the illusion. So, okay. All right. Let me try that again. So, yes, CC, where do I sign up? What two or three things would you recommend to somebody who says, you know, I really, I, I, I've got to do this? I think the, the very first thing is you have to know what you're going to be doing. You can't just go, this sucks. I'm going to, I'm going to go do freelance. What are you going to do? Do you have skills? Do you have things that you can actually market? Uh, you've got being a freelancer. One of the things I've seen people fall down. The num number one thing is they don't have a basic. They don't have basic business skills. They don't. They, they they might be a coder. They might be you know be able to design websites. But you've got to have at least a little bit of business savvy, or at least get it, because you're gonna have to market yourself. You're gonna have to invoice people, get payment, all that yucky operations crap that once you're a freelancer, you got to do on your own. So I think you have to have the business sense, and you got to know what how, what you're gonna be doing. I mean. You know, saying, oh, I'm just going to be a freelance social media consultant. Well, you know what? There's a, those are a dime a dozen these days. You know, I can't throw a rock without hitting some guru or rock star. So how are you going to make yourself different to stand out? And you really got to think about that. And then you got to hustle. And I don't know about you, but I suck at pimping myself. I hate pimping myself. It's one of the hardest things in the world, but you have to do it because you got to get people to hire you and then make sure you take good care of them and, you know. Under promise and over deliver is a good good m m mantra to get into your head because clients love that. Yeah, those are that sounds like excellent advice. And I uh, I think after this is the three of us to get together and um, pick up some of those rocks and throw them really really hard. Big some, rocks, some big good. ones. <laughs> giant giant stones. Well, CC, my friend, thank you very much for hanging out with for a few minutes here today. We appreciate it. Cheers. No, this was fun. Yeah, you know. Good. Glad you liked it. For those of you that are listening, um, so we've got these classes we do teaching people how to become authors. We're not necessarily going to teach you all it takes to be a successful freelance author, but if you want to know how to actually get a book published, you can check out some of the classes we have over at our education page on our website. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But first, you can get all the notes of the things we talked about today and links to both of CC's books as well as links to his website over at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital age. For more information, education, and insight, find that at ePublishUnum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.